Before John became a nationally known speaker, he worked in developing young people for life's challenges through the Boy Scouts of America. He is known for action-packed presentations that remind us just how much we make a difference in people's lives. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in welcoming our keynote speaker, John Drebinger. Safer you make your workplace, you make the rest of the country safe. People catch the vision of what you do and they move forward from there. So it really does go beyond even the walls of the gates of the where your people work. I had a lot of guys there I knew had been there for years. I mean, I'd interviewed and talked to them and they'd been there for a long time. And I knew, just as you know, that there are things in the workplace today that weren't there two years ago. They weren't there six weeks ago. Some safety devices or procedures didn't used to happen. And now they're there. So without further ado, please welcome John Drebinger to the stage. We're going to have a little bit of fun this morning, talk to you about watching out for each other and how to share that when somebody sees a hazard. Uh, to start out and have a little bit of fun, let's check this out, Brad. Do you know what this is? It's a little red ball. It's a red ball. That's exactly why I picked Brad, because <laughs> I looked at this group over here and thought, mm, maybe not. So, yeah. <laughs> well, it's awkward if you get somebody up here and you go, what's this? And they go... I don't know. <laughs> you don't want to embarrass people. So, Brad, what we're going to do is take this like so, tear it in half, and I get two. All right? Now, let me borrow your hands, please. Okay, perfect. Now, come over this way. People think we're dancing. You've been watching Dancing with the Stars or whatever. Now, there's Dancing with the Idiot on the stage. Let me have the, me, me, not you. Yeah, right. No, no, me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All of a sudden, thought that, that may come out wrong. Let me have this one. Okay, now, this one will go right here. Let me have that one. Hold that one real tight right here. Now, bring your hand here. You're going to see this one jump from my hand into yours. Take a look. Oh, you're good. <laughs> yeah, they, they didn't tell me he knew this trick. Okay, now, let me try this. Let me have this one here. Hold that real tight. Okay, now you're going to actually see this one jump from my hand. Turn this way. That's, that's a cute look for you. <laughs> Get that on the screen. Oh, that's nice, yeah. There we go. Bring your hand back out front. Okay. Open it up. Oh, very good. Now watch. This one here. This one will go, Brad, right here. Let me have that. That goes here. Now, how many do I have here? Two. Two. No, actually, it's one but it's one coin. Now, I do have a present for you for coming up here. And I, I know it's awkward being the first person on stage, but I want you to think about safety 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. This present will help you do that. And I looked around, most of you have one of these. And uh, also, you see, I want you to understand that sometimes people can be distracted. <laughs> there you go, <laughs> right like so, Brad. Thank you very much, good job. Be careful, stay to the right there, okay? Fourth reason you watch out for the people is the other one that benefits you. When you watch out for the safety of others, you will never have any regret that you didn't say anything. You'll never have the regret that you chose to not say something and that person got hurt. I've interviewed a lot of people that watched somebody else doing something unsafe and chose not to say something and that person got hurt. Last year at the American Society of Safety Engineers, I got done with my presentation. I'm sitting there Everybody left the room. And then this one lady walked up to me, had a tremble in her voice, clearly was stressed, and said, John, please make sure people understand. They should always point out a hazard to somebody. They should always say something when they see somebody doing something unsafe. She said, 11 years ago, I watched somebody, they were doing something unsafe, and I chose not to say something, and they got hurt. She says, there hasn't been a day in the past 11 years where I haven't had, the, lived, had to live with a nightmare of not saying something. For 11 years, the nightmare of not saying something is brought up to me over and over again. I didn't ask her because she didn't volunteer. She was nice enough to share the story with me, and she was clearly in pain. I didn't ask her what happened, but it, it had to be from her, her tension. It had to be a fatality or at the very least a disabling injury because it haunted her ever since then. So the fourth reason you watch out for the people is you'll never have the agony of dealing with that. What I'm going to share with you now is what I consider to be the most important part of the whole presentation. And that is how you respond when somebody points safety out to you. Okay. Does that look like a real dollar bill as far as you can tell? Okay, if you'd bring that on the stage, place going, oh, rats, why me? Okay. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to write down the serial number. Each dollar bill has its own number. I'll take out my pen. Come on over here. All right, and if you'd read that off out loud, I'll write it down. D. Okay, D is in David, got it. 
seven nine three eight one four C is in cat. C is in cat. I think uh, let's see seven nine three. Oh, three, three, two, threes. Okay, that's, that's where I missed it. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to have you read it again. I'll hold it up so they can say it didn't cheat. Write something else down. Go ahead. Bees and dog, seven, nine, three, three, eight, one, four, C. Got it. Okay, here we go. Come on over here and stand right there. Hold that. I'm going to take this here and uh, Vadim, right? If you could hold that for me. All righty, perfect. Now hold that up so everybody can see it. And Blake, tear that in half. <laughs> Besides with your new plastic bills <laughs> with a 20, <laughs> I'm not sure how easily it would be to tear. <laughs> we could have an injury. It's like. <laughs> All right. So you, you really tore it. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> See, normally I explain to them how to make it look like you've torn it without really doing it. But <laughs> I missed, one. missed one spot. Oh, well. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll do it again. Now I've got four quarters. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Watch closely. We'll get rid of the evidence here. And that's the end of that. But we've got a problem. <laughs> you owe me a dollar. No, there's a way out. <laughs> Since I started, I've had this lemon over here, right like so. Now I'm going to take and put on my uh, safety gloves here. Sometimes I borrow a knife from someone in the audience. For today's purposes, we'll just use a knife I have up here. Save a little bit of time. There we go. A little plastic knife but I still put my gloves on. We'll cut that in half just like so. It's free music, <laughs> what do you expect? Okay, take that, twist it in half. Ooh, something inside. Take that out, let me have this half here. Go ahead and unroll that. Very dramatic how you're dragging this out. <laughs> and now read the serial number off out loud. D seven nine three three eight one four C. There you go, back together again, just like we started. Thank you very much. You can uh, you can keep that. Yeah, yeah. So let me talk to you about the most important part of this presentation, and that is how you respond. The reason I do that trick is it illustrates the point. You see, these gloves are a result of that. I was speaking at the Dow Corning plant in Carrollton, Kentucky. And I was, I was doing my presentation. And after, it, it happened to be a week where I had taken my safety gloves out and washed them. And they hadn't gotten back into my prop case. So I was doing the first presentation there, and they had gloves on. And usually, like I said, I borrow a knife from some of the audience. And so I, uh, I'm cutting the, knife, cutting the uh, lemon with a knife. And afterwards, the young man walks up to me and says, John, would you like me to watch out for your safety? <laughs> I did exactly what I tell you people do. I went, what? <laughs> Look at my prop table. Okay, what uh, what did I leave out or what, what did I do wrong? And I turned and I said, sure. And he said, hey, I noticed you were cutting that lemon open and you didn't have any gloves on. And you could get hurt doing that. That'd be, that'd be bad and it'd be embarrassing. He said, uh, we have some leather gloves with a Kevlar lining that I can get you that uh, you could use the rest of the week during the different shifts you're doing. And then when you leave, you can take them with you. And as you travel around, you'd have them protecting. He said, would you like that? I said, you bet. That's great. Thank you. Thanks for watching out for my safety. And he got them for me. It's a few weeks later. I'm in a different facility and a, a manufacturing plant. A guy comes up to me afterwards and says, hey, John, would you like me to watch out for your safety? I said, you bet. He said, I noticed you were cutting that lemon open. You had those leather gloves on, and that's good. But you see, our guys use a knife in our process here that is so sharp, it can cut right through leather. And he said, um, we've got some Kevlar gloves that are cut resistant that I could get you. And then you could use them this week and then take them with you. Would you like that? And I said, you bet. Now, you're a sharp group. You realized that I told you the leather gloves had a Kevlar lining. Why didn't I tell him? Well, because how you respond is not about you. You see, when Blake points, or Frank points out a hazard to me and, and lets me know, hey, John, that's a little too heavy to lift. I'm now protected. How I respond to you is not about me. It's about the next person that Frank sees. Because if I say to Frank, hey, thanks very much. I appreciate that. Thanks for watching out for me. Maybe then, maybe he sees Dale near a bigger hazard. Something a lot worse than cutting a lemon open. And he says something. 
because I responded positively. On the other hand, if he sees me and he goes, hey, John, you know, tells me about it. Hey, as you know, you need a little help lifting that. If I said, would you leave me alone? Would you think I am stupid? Of course, in his mind, he's thinking, yes. <laughs> but anyway, if I respond negatively like that, maybe later on you see Dale near hazard and think, oh, shoot. I thought, you know, I'd help John. I get yelled at. I don't want to do that again. And maybe he doesn't say something to you and it was really serious and you get hurt. See, when you point safety out to me, it's not about me. It's about the next person, how I respond. I want to thank you for your time this morning and hope to see you in the future. Take care. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.